good evening and thank you everyone for watching VA TV. As you know that we have an incoming election on November 3rd. So this evening we have the honor to introduce to our audience one candidate for Bottom City Council District 3, Mr. Donnie D. Palmer. Good Thank evening. You. Thank you, sir. Uh, now, you, can you introduce yourself to our mm -hmm. audience? Yes, sir. My name is Donnie Palmer. I am a Boston resident my whole life. Uh, I'm an Army veteran. Uh, I once worked for the Boston Public Schools as a special ed power until I decided to run for city council. Um, I run a Dorchester Boston Club. I help uh, youth and uh, at-risk youth, you know, change their life and become champions and install in them uh, great disciplines. Um, teach them how to be a good, a good role model. Uh, I teach them boxing, I teach them how to live in the community, I teach them whatever they want to know. I just teach them life skills, and um, I enjoy doing it. Uh, that in general, now in detail, where you grew up? I grew up uh, in the South End, uh, yeah. Washington Street and Mass Ave, uh, and uh, Mandela apartment buildings. And which school did you go? Uh, when I was a kid, grade school, elementary school, I went to Harvard Kent uh, Elementary School in Charlestown. And for high school, I middle school, before high school, I went to the Taft Middle School, which was in Brighton. Then I went to the Dearborn for one year. That's why I graduated from Dearborn Middle School, which was in Orchard Park, you know, Roxbury. And then I went to the Brooks School. I went to boarding school. My mom sent me to boarding school uh, because I was a good student and uh, I had good, good test scores. And she wanted me to excel in, in basketball and academics and, and whatever I wanted to do. So I went to boarding school, which is Brooks in North Andover. And then I actually went there for three years and I decided to come back home and I graduated from Boston English High School. Oh, you about six foot. 10. Yes, sir. And 250 pounds. Yes, sir. You play basketball or all the. Yes, I play, yes uh, that's right. I played basketball in college. Uh, I went to Brown Mackey College in Salina. Uh, we won the uh, NJCAA National Basketball uh, Tournament. Uh, for Div Division Two JUCOs, uh, we're the number one team in the country. We went 36 and one under Coach Francis Flax. I got a scholarship to play at Robert Morris University along with some other Bostonians: uh, Tony Lee, uh, Corey Boston, and Derek Coleman. They were my teammates. They went to Charlestown High, the legendary Charlestown High, and uh, I got to play with those kids. Um, and it was it was great to play with some fellow Bostonians at a major D1 school. How how you end up to be a professional boxer? Uh, I ended up being a professional boxer. Um, well, <laughs> how the change? The change, <laughs> when? The, the change happened around two thousand six, two thousand five, two thousand six. Uh, right after my uh, stint at Robert Morris, you know, uh, pro basketball seemed like a far-fetched dream for me after being in college and uh, you know it was kind of hard going to camps and not being not going to a major division one school uh, you know um, you don't have the same opportunities as someone who went to like Syracuse or like a Duke you know because you go I went to a smaller school so no matter what I scored or how well I did at my level you know they're going to always see a kid that played at the higher level you know not about you know what you do, it's all about who you know in some cases. And that's kind of how it is, politics of basketball. So I said, you know, well, I'm, I'm too big to, too big and too young to work a office job or a nine to five right now. Let me put my size to use, you know? Let me uh, see what I can do with this box and stuff because I still had like that athletic, you know, drive in me. And so I transferred everything over from basketball to boxing. 
and it became really successful. I was really successful in it with the transition. Do you say that is um, uh, successful, but um, it's just a short term. Now, when you change to the professional boxing, and uh, how, how you train it? Uh, tra Where? <laughs> I, I, I train actually in uh, Dorchester. Uh, we opened up a gym. Uh, Danny Kelly, his son and I, we started a gym called Dorchester Boxing Club in Fields Corner, um, right near Gibson uh, Gibson uh, Street, where the police station is on 82 Parkman Street. And uh, after I turned pro, left the amateurs, I came back home from Colorado because that's where I was living, the station in the Army Boxing. And we opened the gym, and I, I trained at the gym, you know, and I also trained young kids and and families at the gym also, and so. And after you trained it, what is your big fight and what is your achievement? Oh. And I think that you get some award. Yeah, uh, some, well I won, uh, before boxing, before uh, boxing professionally, I won uh, All Armed Forces. Uh, I won a couple state Golden Gloves, Colorado and, and uh, New England Golden Gloves. Uh, I fought some big uh, fights at Foxwoods and Mohegan Sun Casinos, along with uh, Twin Rivers Casinos. Uh, all the fights I won were by knockout. Um, I have one draw and uh, one loss. Um, we're looking to avenge that loss soon, probably in Atlantic, Atlantic City also. So I still box, you know, uh, in between this campaigning and and meeting and greeting people and door knocking. You know, I still try to use boxing as my outlet. Oh, okay. But in, uh, I know that in uh, 2009, you, you go into the U.S. Army. Why? Um, I, I went to the U.S. Army in 2008, I think it was, uh, 2008. I wanted to do something for my country. You know, I've always wanted, my mom was a, my mom was a, is, is a veteran, you know, and uh, I kind of wanted to proceed that, uh, you know, and uh, keep it going in my family. So I decided to, uh, to join the Army, and the Army also gave me the opportunity to come box for them. They said, Donnie, yeah, we'd love you to box for us. You're a big, big heavyweight, you know, you, we can teach you how to box uh, and excel your skills, and uh, we want you to train for the Olympics. So I said, okay, I get to do both. I get to serve my country and I got to box, you know, so double whammy, I got to fight for my country and fight for the army, which is awesome. You have a chance, have a chance to go out, go overseas? Uh, yes, yes, uh, the WCAP, the World Class Athletes Program, they uh, take fighters, they take the team everywhere, uh, Aju Bajan, they take the team to India, South Africa, uh, they take the team everywhere. Okay, and after you, at least after you, the contract, you retire and become a veteran? Yes, I oh, did. Okay, become a veteran. And you go back to the professional boxing? Yes, after I uh, left the Army, uh, that's when I began professional boxing. Okay. And school teaching also, as a para. All right. One thing. On July 20, 19, uh, 2014, mm -hmm. you were shot. Yes. I believe in Phil Connor in yes. Dorchester. Yes. What do you think? Oh, that was what a life. What is your experience? That was a life change. My life flashed in front of my eyes. Uh, with when I was down and I was bleeding out, uh, I was thinking, wow, you know, I didn't get shot in the in the army, but you know, I get shot in my own streets, uh, you know, for protecting my sister. Uh, I, it made me want to be a better person, you know. Uh, even though I was protecting my sister, it just made me want to be an all-around better person. Uh, I, f I thought about all the things I've done in life, uh, all the things I could have done in life, all the things I wanted to do in life. You know, I was hoping that uh, if God was to pull me through, that uh, I would be a better person. So I kept promising him when I was bleeding and falling in and out of uh, consciousness. You know, if you pull me through, I promise you I'll be a better person. I'll do what I can do to help more people and, you know, be 
a better citizen in my community. And <clears throat> Through your experience, you think that um, how you can help the youth not be like on that situation? Yes, through my experience hands-on, I definitely feel that will help me <clears throat> relate to the youth of, you know, uh, being violent, being shot, being hurt, you know, uh, having your life almost taken from you, you know. Um, I can definitely relate to the youth because I have that first-hand experience. And I can tell them, you know, there's other things you can do. Mm, so far, right now, you uh, at the Dorchester Boxing Club? Yes, sir. Okay. Mm. And uh, what do you do there? Uh, I, I, at the Dorchester Boxing Club, what I do is uh, I train myself. I also train young kids from the ages of 6 to 66. Uh, young kids, young men, young women, everybody can come. Everybody's welcome. I don't care where you're from. All walks of life come to my gym. It's a beautiful gym because we very diverse. Um, we have a boxing program for uh, kids that want to box and compete and train, in, and train for the Olympics. We have boxing programs for young men and women who just want to stay in shape and, uh, you know, uh, start a better lifestyle, eat right, you know, exercise right. So I teach these kids all those skills, you know, either it's to be a competitor or it's just to, you know, live a, a healthy lifestyle. And uh, boxing is a sport that teaches you many skills other than uh, a one-two punch, a jab left hook. You know, boxing teaches you how to persevere. And that's uh, a skill. I think perseverance is a skill because it's learned and it's acquired in life. And I try to pass that on to, to the youth that uh, come across. I remember that you had time to work with the special needs at the bottom school. Can you share some experience about that? Yes. Uh, I was a parent at Boston Schools for about three years. Uh, I, I enjoyed it. It's a, it's a very, uh, you know, I'm very passionate about it. You know, it's a very rewarding job working with kids with autism and kids with, the, you know, cognitive delays, you know, because uh, they're, they're bright, you know. It's just how you connect with them and how you differentiate the information to them, how you deliver the information, you know, to get, you know, your answer or your feedback, get your data back from them. But um, it's very rewarding. A uh, couple of experiences. I see kids that I used to teach two years ago walking down Phil's Corner. Hey, Mr. Palmer, Mr. Palmer, how you doing? What are you doing? You know, you still got the gym, you still boxing. And I'm like, yeah, you know, you're going to come by yet, you know? And uh, a couple of them actually do come to the gym now. So I, I feel um, uh, being a teacher in the uh, school system, in the special ed school system, I give the kids. Uh, another vision, like they can look at me and say, wow, that guy, you know, he's from where I'm from, Fields Corner, Dorchester, he works in the school, like he looks like me, uh, he lives next door to me, and he has a gym, and he's doing this, and he teaches me, wow, you know, I don't, you know, it gives them more to look at, you know, more to look forward to in life, which is awesome. Yeah, your work is around the youth, around the student and right now like at the Dorchester Boxing Club involved with a lot of youth. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, <clears throat> you are a teacher, a veteran, a professional boxer, yes, sir. and now you run for district bottom city council. Okay. What do you think you qualify for that job? What makes me qualified to uh, be city councilor is uh, all the things that you uh, prepped me for uh, in the speech. Uh, um, I can relate to the kids that are the, the, the at-risk youth in the city of, uh, of Boston uh, from being shot. Uh, I was a veteran. A lot of veterans live in Boston, in Dorchester. Um, I'm hands-on with the kids in the Boston Public Schools. I'm hands-on with the kids at the gym. Uh, I have a college, college education. Uh, I have a bachelor's and I'm working my master's in accounting. Um, you know, I'm very, very bright. 
uh, when it comes to economics. And um, I'm, a, I'm a conservative young man. I'm looking to be the first black conservative on the city council. And uh, I feel that should qualify me a lot to be a city council because I have different views you know, than what Frank Baker has. Mm. You know that the District 3 already has a councillor, and you want to replace, and you think that you have, you more qualified than him. And how you ask the people to vote for you? Um, I ask people to vote for me simply because, like I said before, uh, I'm a young conservative. Uh, there's the city council is filled with, it's, even though it's nonpartisan, but their views. You have to look at their views and the things they vote for and the bills that they lobby for. Uh, a lot of them are liberal and Democrats, and they do whatever the mayor says. You have a voice in the community, because I'm from the community. Uh, I'm from Fields Corner. You know, I, I'm from where, you, where you're from. I'm from where most Hispanics, Latinos, Vietnamese are from. I'm a voice for them, so I can speak for them. And I feel um, uh, that makes me very qualified. Uh, Thank you very much for your time and mm -hmm. share your life, your experience, and your intention to run for Batong City Council District 3. Yes. And <clears throat> thank you for being on BATV. And we thank you for continue to support VATV and we ask you, remind you on incoming election on November 3rd, remember Mr. Donny Palmer on your District 3. Thank you for watching.